The last time the Senate convened, we had just reclaimed the Capitol from violent criminals who tried to stop Congress from doing our duty. The mob was fed lies. They were provoked by the president and other powerful people. And they tried to use fear and violence to stop a specific proceeding of the first branch of the federal government, which they did not like. But we pressed on. We stood together and said an angry mob would not get veto power over the rule of law in our nation, not even for one night. We certified the people's choice for their 46th president. Tomorrow, President-elect Biden and Vice President-elect Harris will be sworn in. We'll have a safe and successful inaugural right here on the west front of the Capitol, the space that President Bush 41 called democracy's front porch. And then we'll move forward. Our work for the American people will continue as it has for more than 230 years. There are serious challenges that our nation needs to continue confronting. But there will also be great and hopeful opportunities for us to seize. Certainly, November's elections did not hand any side a mandate for sweeping ideological change. Americans elected a closely divided Senate, a closely divided House, and a presidential candidate who said he'd represent everyone. So our marching orders from the American people are clear. We're to have a robust discussion and seek common ground. We are to pursue bipartisan agreement everywhere we can and check and balance one another respectfully where we must. And through all of this, we must always keep in mind that we're all Americans. We all love this country and we're all in this together. Now, two things are true here. One, if Mitch McConnell can acknowledge that Trump is to blame for the insurrection at the Capitol, then no other senator has an excuse not to acknowledge the same. McConnell is the most craven, partisan, duplicitous politician of our lifetimes. And for even him to outright validate the article of impeachment that Trump will be on trial for means that no one else in the Republican conference has a leg to stand on by pretending that Trump didn't do exactly what he did, meaning that there is no reason why Trump shouldn't be convicted by the Senate. Consider too that when McConnell says that Trump did indeed feed the insurrectionists the lies that led to the violence, he's effectively indicting him right then and there for the article that he was impeached for. The lone article of impeachment is incitement of insurrection. And so if McConnell can stand up and say outright that Trump's lies provoke the insurrectionists, he's basically signaling a guilty vote in the upcoming Senate trial. And yet what's also true is that Mitch McConnell is decidedly and objectively complicit in the insurrection. During the entirety of the last four years, he stood idly by while Senate Republicans contracted every ounce of their power to Trump, while they signaled to their supporters half the country that Trump could do no wrong, that he always tells the truth, that all of his policy positions are fair and just and right. People like Mitch McConnell taught Americans to trust a man whom no one in their right mind should trust. And that culminated into Trump claiming that he won the election, and so of course Republicans believed him, because the Mitch McConnells of the world spent years convincing the base that every word that left Trump's lips was sacred. In reality, Trump is and was a prolific liar, telling tens of thousands of easily debunkable lies. He lied every last day of his presidency, and McConnell knew that. And yet because his only priority was the consolidation of power, he never pushed back once, meaning that he was in part to blame when those same people who were trained to believe Trump once again believed Trump when he lied that he won the election. You don't get to help build Dr. Frankenstein's monster and then cry victim when that monster wreaks havoc. McConnell is not the victim here, he's the abuser. And by the way, just so that we're clear, this isn't Mitch McConnell finding a conscience. It's not him doing the right thing. McConnell has one setting, and that is to hold on to power. And he's decided that protecting Trump will hurt Republicans in the long term. So he's just trying to wash his hands of him by signaling a green light for Republicans to vote to convict him and then vote to ensure that he can't run again. And this is the one area where Democrats and Republicans should agree, where we're actually bedfellows, if for wildly different reasons. And that's because not only will Trump hurt the GOP long term, but he's a clear and 
present danger to democracy more broadly. And so both parties have a vested interest in making sure that he can never run again. The fact is that we've seen firsthand just how dangerous Trump is as president, how he will brainwash his supporters with lies and foment violence and mismanage everything that he touches. We've watched as 400,000 Americans died from a pandemic that this president willfully allowed to explode throughout this country. By the time this virus is finally contained, thanks to Trump's response, we'll likely have lost more than half a million Americans. Trump likes to tout the talking point that he started no new wars while in office, which is true, and yet still more Americans will have died under his watch than in almost any war in our country's history. So as far as this upcoming Senate trial is concerned, the facts are as clear as day. Trump spent months peppering his supporters with this idea that the election was stolen, and the rally that gave way to that insurrection was quite literally called the Stop the Steal rally, meaning that there's no confusion as to who was responsible for this entire charade that would ultimately form the foundation for an insurrection at the US Capitol. Even Trump's speech leading up to the insurrection demanded that his supporters walk to the Capitol and show strength. You fight like hell, and if you don't fight like hell, you're not gonna have a country anymore. Now it is up to Congress to confront this egregious assault on our democracy. And after this, we're gonna walk down, and I'll be there with you. We're gonna walk down. We're gonna walk down. Anyone you want, but I think right here, we're gonna walk down to the Capitol. And we're gonna cheer on our brave senators and congressmen and women. And we're probably not gonna be cheering so much for some of them. Because you'll never take back our country with weakness. You have to show strength and you have to be strong. Stand up and fight. Stand up and hold your representatives accountable. Over the next 10 days, we get to see the machines that are crooked, the ballots that are fraudulent, and if we're wrong, we will be made fools of. But if we're right, a lot of them will go to jail. So, let's have trial by combat. And for the umpteenth time, just because criminality is done in broad daylight doesn't mean it's any less criminal. So the point here is twofold. One, that McConnell is right to admit that Trump incited the insurrection. And two, that McConnell's hands are by no means clean. This may be politically advantageous to him and Democrats at the same time, and so we can be in agreement here, but let's not pretend for a second that Mitch McConnell should be applauded for acknowledging objective reality. While you're here, please check out my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen. I take a deep dive into the top stories of the week, and I also interview major players in the world of politics, like Kamala Harris, Adam Schiff, Nancy Pelosi, Pete Buttigieg, Katie Porter, Al Franken, Cory Booker, Jamie Harrison, Mary Trump, and many more. Again, that's No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen, available anywhere you listen to podcasts.